Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1805. And in this video, we want to see how to go from a cross tabulated table into a proper data set. Now, anytime you have column headers and row headers in a cross tabulated report, if you want to get it back into a proper data set, Power Query is the way to go. And we'll see that three-click solution at the end. However, sometimes you want to do it with formulas. Now, here's the old school way. We'd use index, and then we build a number incrementer to extract whatever the condition was the correct number of times. And we had to have a different number incrementer depending on if they were column headers or row headers. And then we could extract all the numbers. But Victor at YouTube has an amazing short formula that may even rival Power Query. And here it is, equals if NA, if error, we'll do the same thing also. And in value, well, I'm trying to go from the row headers and then repeat row headers the number of times equivalent to the number of columns. Now, when we put something into value, if it gets an error, then we type a comma, and we put what we want if there's an error. But guess what? There's absolutely no errors here. So what we're going to get if error to do is we put in the number of columns, and this becomes a function argument array operation with seven columns. And anytime you run seven columns against a set of number of rows, you're going to get a rectangle range. So watch what happens when I close parentheses and Enter. Now, we can't see that there's seven quads. But if I move this over here, sure enough, there's seven quads. And what this formula is doing, and this is such a strange construction, well, there's no errors. This forces a function argument array operation to create the array. But because there's no errors, it has to fill in seven items. So it just repeats the item seven times. Control Z. Now all we need is to use two column. Two column will take the items by row and list them vertically. And that's our amazing formula. It will work because of the fact that we want to repeat each item a number of times that's equivalent to the number of columns. So when I Control Enter, there's the column. Each one of these quads for a record in the data set is now going to be matched up with day one, day two, day three, and so on. Well, it's just as easy going from column headers. This is where we're starting, comma. There are no NAs, but the function argument array operation will just repeat all of these items here by whatever the number of rows are. Close parentheses, Control Enter. We can see it over here, Control Z, F2. To call. It'll take row by row and roll those up into a column. And sure enough, if we're trying to match up quad day one and that number, where well, there's the two conditions, all we need is the number here. Quad day two, there's the number, where well, there's quad and day two, and the number will go here. Now we simply use to call because it'll take items in rows and put them in a column. So we'll enter just two column close parentheses, Control Enter, and there's our amazing solution. Now, if we want to do this all in one formula, watch this. I'm going to highlight this little bit, Control CC. That copies and opens up the clipboard. If your clipboard doesn't open, then make sure to go to Clipboard, click the Dialog Launcher, and then down in Options, you could say Check when CC is pressed twice. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Control C, I'm collecting those elements over here. Control C, I have all three. Let's unhide, right click, unhide. We want to take these three formulas and stack them up horizontally. So equals H stack. Array one, well, there it is. Comma, there's array two, comma, array three close parentheses, and there's one formula that completely unwinds this cross-tabulated table into a single cell formula. 
Now, if you look at this formula right here, we have some repeating formula elements where we're using the same range a number of times. When that happens, we can use the let function. The let function allows us to define a variable, row headers, column headers, and inside data. Then I simply use the same formula, but with the variables. And it will give us the same result. And the advantage to let and there's probably not much of an advantage here because there's not much data. But when you use a variable, it calculates that one time, which means it retrieves the data and stores it in memory, and then uses it over and over. Also, sometimes people like to use Alt-Enter, Alt-Enter to make the formula easier to read. You can also use a full name, row header, column header, data then the formula becomes even easier to read. Now what about Power Query? Now if we're doing Power Query, it's just a few clicks. Of course, why would we use formulas? Formulas instantly update when data changes. And you can see, sure enough, that is working Control-Z. But certainly if you're doing this as part of a data import, or you want the easiest way to do this, you have to have your cross-tabulated table in an Excel table. Then instead of going to Data and From Table Range, watch this. I'm going to use a right-click key trick. Look on your keyboard next to Control for the right-click key. When I right-click, notice there's an underline G. So right-click G brings the table into the Power Query Editor. I'm going to name this Crosstab Unwind. I have this column selected. Right-click. Unpivot other columns. And just like that, I have three columns. Instead of renaming here, I go up to the formula bar. And in table.unpivot, the last column has the field name. So I want day, double click, day, double click value, and type sales or units or whatever the number is. Enter. Now I can close and load, close and load two. Table existing, let's put this, let's say AJ17, click OK. And it looks like I definitely made an error. So I'm going to go edit. Double click to edit. It's not sales, it's actually units. And that's what's so amazing about Power Query. It memorized the steps. So I can edit at any time. Now I just click Close and Load, and it will reload it. And now I have units. I've taken this cross tab and created a proper data set. But bam, back here, thanks to Victor for that amazing convert cross tab into a proper table formula.